Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the coast. A balmy Yorkshire coast this morning. To be fair, a couple of balmy Yorkshire men as well. We have to freeze our fingers off somewhere else. <laughs> it's absolutely bitter this morning. A lovely frosty crisp morning. And we're just on our way down here. A quick spot of fishing and maybe a bit of raving about. So I'll put the camera away, otherwise. I'll be getting down there really fast. See you in a bit. Well, I've made it down to the bottom without landing on my backside, so that's a bonus. One of the things that I've covered in videos before is about a little bit of watercraft. It's about when the water's this coloured, you can't see where the formations are, so you need to look at what the water's doing to be able to tell you where the reefs are and where the gullies are. I've covered it in a few other videos before, but if you can see, like, waves breaking or disturbance on the surface, like right in the distance there by that, by that headland, you can see that the, the waves are turning and it's white, so it's come over shallow ground, so it's broke. And where, if you can see, like an area of white and an area of white, and then no waves in the middle, it shows that there's a gully in the middle. Just about learning a bit of watercraft. We'll get down, we'll get the rods out. I love looking into areas like this because you can see like the different layers. You see all those half snapped off nodules. Like these here. Like an iron pyrite's nodule. Right, well, we've got our first baits out. Talk to you really quickly just a little bit about the watercraft, like I was talking about earlier on. You can see by looking out in this area that we've got waves breaking over this side. That shows it reefs up on that side. And the same way over here, you can see that there are a couple of rocks showing. So we've got a gully that runs out in that direction towards where that reef is. So this part here is a hollow that we've cast the baits out into. Because as I've explained before, if you've got little gullies, not only is the water a little bit deeper there, but also if there's any food particles, if there's any bits of food getting washed around in the tide, they get washed and they deposit into these dips, these gullies. So the fish feed up and down them, so that's why we're casting into them. I'll show you the rigs in a minute. You can see where the waves are breaking on this side now. The area where we're fishing today is an area under the cliff. Some people immediately say that you shouldn't be under there, but by knowing the types of cliff as well, there's no overhang and there's no fresh fall for like areas like that. Which I'll be able to show you around here. We've, uh, we've only been here 10 minutes and we've already found a stack of fossils. We've got a big section of ammonite and a few broken pieces of ammonites here. There's a couple of little ones in there. While we're waiting for a bite, we'll have a route around and then we'll show you what we can find. We're really lucky at the moment actually, and I, I find this fascinating. Tom is actually a geologist. When he's not fishing, I'm just chatting there and most of the fossils that we're finding, he says are from the Jurassic period. I'm looking up at the cliff. Other than like the little holes you can see where the people have dug jet out. What you're saying about the different layers. Sorry, I was uh, where were the fairies there. So I mean, basically what you've got if you start at the top of the cliff and try and read it like a, a book in simple terms, you've got sandstone, so we had a, a so, shell. So the same that you can see right at the very top? Yeah, I don't know if, the, hopefully the camera will pick yeah, it up. Just above all the, white, all the white that you can yeah. see, yeah. So you're, you're quite shallow sea there, imagine you know, near Whitby Piers, you've got your, your sandy beach in effect. And as you work down the cliff, we're gradually working offshore, so there's less there's less energy in the environment, the grains become smaller and here if you imagine when you're offshore in a boat and you're wrecking this is that soft sediment compacted down So how old are you talking from the sandstone? Because when you're looking, when you're thinking about the sediment that lays in a river it takes years and years and years doesn't it, to lay that but amount of sediment? Have, like in this system you will have you will have some pulses of sand where you've had, say if you had a big storm or something and you've pulled some sand offshore that's why you get your bands and your layers so, but then you might have some erosion. So you might have a section that's a metre thick 
and be a couple of thousand years old if you've had a lot of change in the energy system you might look at a meter and look at a million years of course is there a way of estimating because you've got the you've got the levels where the nodules are there to the sandstone you're talking at least 30 meters yeah well um, how long was it going to would it take it, to lay that it, 30 it, meters like are we looking at jurassic I mean, rock we're, here we're at the bottom at, we're looking at rocks that are around about 180 million years old incredible and we see you know if you're looking at the top at the clays you know, our last ice age maybe 20,000 years ago but this isn't you know, it's not like laying down layer on layer on layer, like building a cave. We've had material lost out of the system. Nice bite would be... Uh, yeah, be perfect right about now. We're raking about in the rocks here, and there are literally just fossils everywhere. Just as we've been stood talking, look, watch this. Well, there's an ammonite. You can see it all inside this rock, but not only that. Look at this one here. There's a bit of a shell. There's some more there. There's some more. I'm going to try with a hammer to split this little one. I do it the other side. Oh, nearly. Nearly got it all. But yeah, we've been here. That's one that Tom just split a minute ago. Look, incredible, aren't they? Oh wow! Yeah. There's one there. If you lift that top off. Probably could. Clear, it's stuck in it, clear. Do you want to try and knock the top off it? You can see it there, look. Just better prise it off. Oh, well done. Give it a wash up in a bit and it'll look nice, eh? That's a lovely one. A different type of rock, innit? Yeah. We've got a lot of this clear, yeah. Absolutely incredible, innit? Like 180 million years old, these things. There's another one there, look. North Yorkshire's Jurassic Coast. It's time for changing baits. If you've seen any of our other rough ground videos, you'll see straight away, all we use is just a, uh, a simple pulley rig with a rotten bottom set. Uh, Tom's gonna talk you through some of the baiting up, mainly so that I don't get dirty fingers again. The easy way out. Right. So we've got a mixture of baits here. Um, we've got blocks type of worm, buy them from any tackle shop really. I've got squid, I buy those in bulk so they're in my own sandwich bags. Some more Cornish cuttle, kindly gifted by John, and some crab wings. For so, people that aren't familiar, this is, when people talk about cart, this is cart. Tom has actually done a brilliant feature for Hookpoint magazine and I'll tag that into the description of this video about cart. So, if you just use cart or wings on their own, they are very soft, they'll wash away. It's flat seas today, so we, it wouldn't be too much of an issue, but in rough seas, 15 minutes, it's gone. So we use a bulky bait, whether that be a fish bait or a squid, something to just attach the wing to or the cart. The Give cart isn't your bait, the cart's the scent. Yeah, like ground baiting for carp or putting a fine bed of fines out of the fish in a boily over the top. Your squid is the main thing that the cod is going to pick hold of. Um, you can fish neat wings, they just won't last as long. 
So we'll start off with this one with a squid. Again, with all baiting up, start with a nice proud hook point. There's no point putting the bait out there without one. Don't worry about the elastic. The water is chocolate brown right now. They're not going to worry about that. And the amount of rooting around that cod do to eat all sorts, they're not going to worry about a little bit of fine elastic. No. I'll re-wrap this wing in my bag. How to keep your knife sharp, use it on a rock. <laughs> Wings, when you bring them out, you will store them in a flask. It will keep them tough. If you leave them, they'll go very soft and very hard to use. Before I'm going to bait up, I'll take them out. In summer, a matter of minutes, they'll go slightly malleable and soft. In winter, you can take them out a little longer. Awesome. Look at that. I'll tell you what, you can see. What wouldn't want to eat that? And like you said, a very proud hook point. Just wrap the panel around the mono a couple of times just to anchor it in position. Just nick it in the top. And voila. Yep. And when we say rock and bottom setup, all we've got is he's opened out the eye of the lead and you're running on 20 pound mono. The rest of this is a 70 pound, 70 pound hook length, 70 pound trace body and 20 pound rotten bottom. So when the when you cast out, the lead disconnects from the clip and you're just on the lighter mono. So if this comes snagged, this will snap and you'll still get your rig and hopefully a fish back. Tide's dropping off a little bit. So we're gonna move on to a different mark. And this is what we've found scratching about around here. Loads of big ammonites. There's a load of shells in pyrites. And some jet. That's a good one. Mark with a coddle in there. The lovely conditioned fish. Nice in the daylight. Yeah. Just unhooking that coddle in there and it spat this out. Now I'll be surprised if many people recognise what that is. It's not a rockling. That's what's called a Montague sea snail. It's a little fish, but it's called a Montague sea snail. I'll put a name in here so you can have a look at what it is. I've just seen earlier that Quite often, because you, you have to be quite mobile and you're working over rocks like this, you don't bother with a tripod, you just stand your rod up in the rocks. You're not doing that. It's a PB there. It's great to see. You notice it's got them black spots on them. I've found quite a few smaller fish than black spots on them. Mad, aren't they? Good bit of camouflage as a juvenile. Yeah. Perfection in miniature.
I've had something playing with this for a while. And we kind of said, oh, we're going to be moving soon anyway. So I'll just let it play out. And this is, you do get a bycatch of these fishing into this rough ground. This here is a very nice looking and quite large shore rockland. I'm going to use, I'll use a different camera to get a little bit of footage of this because this is a really good looking one. Affectionately called a slug around here. This is the rockling that I caught. It looks an awful lot like a freshwater species called a burbot. All mouth, isn't it? Yep. Lovely looking rockling. Tides turned and started to come in now. This is one of the things we fished an ebbing tide, so we fished the tide out. Whenever you're coming down into areas like this, you need to be sure that you know exactly what the tide's doing so you don't get stuck. Now, we fished it down for a couple of hours, and now as soon as it starts to come back in, don't move. I'm just gonna have a little scratch about. We did have a couple of small codlings, well, three small codlings. I had a nice little rockling there, a really pretty one actually. It looked exactly like a fish called a burbot, a freshwater burbot. They used to be resident in the UK, but I think they're extinct in the UK now. Get them over in the States. And the area what I'm looking at now, I'm just going to take you over. These is uh, iron pyrites. Oh. Little patches like that. There's another bellamite. This area that I'm walking on, all this area of rock here, used to be a seabed. Now we're saying it's, it's the Jurassic Coast, so it's some era of the Jurassic. And the area what I'm looking at here, I was just talking to Tom about them. You do get quite a lot of ammonite prints. But these here, these nodules, see them all, all in like a layer. And you get them in other layers further up the cliff. They're iron pyrite nodules. And what it was, was under the seabed, you can imagine like, if you've ever seen like harbour mud, like mud at the bottom of a river or a canal, and it's black and it's, there's no oxygen in it. This iron pyrite is produced by bacteria breaking down matter. And because there was no oxygen, it ended up using sulphur. Because it, sulphur and iron. And every now and again, when you find a certain one, when you split these nodules open, there'll be the fossil of a creature inside. Either a little fish or an ammonite or some shells or... Just walking about to see if I can find a good one to, to split. Yeah, that's what all these little dips are here. The gorgeous area of coastline. It's the area that I'm from up here. I mean, this is, this is the type of place that we used to knock about when we were kids. Complain, my brothers and sisters, when I was real young. And although I do live down in Cornwall now, and I do really appreciate that it's a lot warmer down there, the only thing that I really miss is a little bit of this coastline, and maybe the moors, the North York moors. There's a good bellamite there. What I'll do is I'll put a picture in here to show you what that would have been. That's just the skeleton that's left. Now look, that would have been an ammonite inside that nodule. And I think there'll be a couple in here. Now look, someone split this one to get that fossil out. What I'll do is I'll come back here in the summer with James, with James and Hannah, maybe come camping, do some proper fossil hunting. Anyway, tide's starting to move, so are we. Another one of the things that this area of coast is really famous for is the jet, Whitby jet in particular, Whitby's just on the coast. 
and every now and again in these little bits of cliff you'll find where someone's found a jet seam and have dug out into it but this here I don't know if you can see all the the ammonites each one of these was a little creature who obviously all died and just got deposited there and then silt's gone over the top there's one there This is one of the nodules that Tom's just knocked out of the rock. Tell me that doesn't just look like a flying saucer. Let's see if there's anything in the east, right? There's a lovely print of one and another and there is part of one you can see just half hidden under the rock. That nodule there would probably have one of those inside of it. That crab pot's seen better days hasn't it? Do you think it'd be mended? Yeah I think that's past saving that one. Go back to where we come down. The tide is coming in now and it's it's getting cold. You can see the sun's just about to go down and it's, <laughs> it drops quickly. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a scratch around, see if I can't find any more fossils. Because I have found a couple of nice little ones that I'm gonna take home for James. He likes dinosaurs, and I think when I explain to him that these are dinosaurs, these were dinosaurs. Because there's literally there's they're everywhere, look. Yeah, find a couple of nice little ones because I don't fancy carrying the real big ones up the top of there. Right, well we made it to the top. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick to my boat fishing. <laughs> I do not miss that. Yeah, just catching the last of the light. It's, oh, it's absolutely stunning. And you can see now, now what I was talking about, about how the waves break over a bit of reef. You can see where it's all white there. And we were fishing into a gully. Yeah. Looking at the conditions, we knew it wasn't going to be a red letter day. We weren't going to be pulling out massive bags of fish because there's no sea running. It was bright sunshine in the middle of the day. But we did manage to get a couple of fish out. We got a couple of three small codlings out, and I got a nice little rockling out. And we had a nice little rav about on the rocks, which is which is what I was hoping for. It was really nice for me anyway to to come back to areas that I used to used to go to when I was a little kid. So maybe like 20 years ago. I will come back and I will do more fishing, I will do more uh, rummaging about sessions on the rocks. Maybe in the summertime though when it's warmer and I can bring James and Hannah. Thank you very much Tom, again. No worries, it's been a pleasure. I'll say thank you twice because Tom carried all the leads back up. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed joining us, all the very best. See you later.